Hey everybody and welcome to another F1 Roundup brought to you by the brilliant Seedstream F1 app. I'm going to talk more about those in a moment, but in this week's video I'm going to be giving you my thoughts and opinions on some of the biggest stories that have cropped up in the Seedstream app over the last week or so around things like the F1 driver market. Lots of talk about drivers moving from team to team, drivers coming into Formula One as rookies. Ahead of a big change in 26, there are complications around when you do that, how you do that, in terms of contract lengths. Lots of discussions going on, making it slightly tricky for teams and drivers to make those decisions, more so than it might normally be. We'll talk about all of that. We will talk about big changes at Ferrari, both in terms of their car ahead of the Imola Grand Prix, but also in terms of engineering personnel, which could be significant. We'll talk about the F1 point system, some political ongoings and much more. But let me tell you quickly about Seedstream. Seedstream is an app that two friends and I, big Formula One fans, developed together over the last couple of years with your help and feedback. Those people that have been using it, particularly in its beta form in recent times, have been helping us to shape it and develop it. And with a big redesign in the last couple of weeks, it is now looking slicker than ever. It's more usable than ever, more user friendly, and I think more useful than ever too. I will ask you for nothing other than to go and try it. It's completely free. And I think if you're a big Formula One fan like I am, you're gonna love it. Let's talk driver market then, because lots of stories cropping up in the app around different drivers moving to different teams. The number of seats that we know are available for 2025 and beyond are diminishing quickly. Now that means that there are a number of decisions that have to be made pretty soon before those seats run out. And so, as ever, the rumour mill is doing its thing. And um, let's start at somewhere like Haas. Haas are looking less and less likely to retain Kevin Magnussen for 2025. Now, you can agree or disagree with that. I actually, can, I actually think, as I said in my last video, I think Kevin Magnussen's actually a really entertaining driver. I think he's got a lot to offer this sport, as he has done for the last few years, and I think that has still got time to run. But if you're looking at the next few years and the future of a team like that, that seems to be just on the up a little bit, maybe Kevin doesn't represent the future. Names that are being associated with that team are Mick Schumacher. Now, Mick Schumacher is a name that we've seen, of course, have an opportunity in Formula One before. It didn't really work out so well, but that name's cropping up again with a view to potentially filling one of the seats towards the back of the grid and getting a chance to get back into racing in Formula One again. Um, he is also being linked with a move to Williams. Williams have potentially a seat with Logan Sargent being on the move at the end of this year and Mick Schumacher already linked to Mercedes could well slot in there. But the other big move or the big rumour going around this week is that Mick Schumacher could end up moving to Alpine. He is already part of and has signed up this year to Alpine's WEC programme, their sports car programme, and so far seemingly has impressed the team management in what he's done there. Alpine could well be an opportunity if one of the two drivers or even both of the two current drivers find their way out of that team. Neither of them particularly happy, obviously struggling with a very difficult car this year. There is a lot of unhappiness, disgruntlement, dissatisfaction at that team, which could leave an opening which Mick Schumacher could end up filling. So we may well end up seeing the Schumacher name back in Formula One a little bit sooner than you might have thought. Keep an eye on that one. Also in the driver market, uh, Logan Sargent looking more and more likely to not be retained by Williams. That may come as no major surprise. What could be a surprise though is his name is cropping up elsewhere. The Haas team seems to be a potential destination. We know that Logan Sargent will bring cash to any team that he joins. Haas need that cash and so that's a potential option. However, also at the Haas team, and looking more and more likely as an option, Zhou Guan Yu potentially could end up going there, who also brings quite a lot of Chinese money. And the Chinese growing, uh, Chinese popularity is growing around Formula One. We saw it at the Chinese Grand Prix. And so the marketing side of bringing a driver like that into your team could, could potentially be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. If you pair that with the cash, and he's not a bad driver either. That could be an option that we may well see come to reality sooner than you think. Um, 
What else do we know about? Uh, from a driver perspective, let's talk about Carlos Sainz because his options are getting thinner and thinner. Um, it looks like Red Bull are going to announce uh, Sergio Perez as having a contract extension. And that may well come, that announcement may well come very, very soon, which would close yet another door for Carlos Sainz, leaving really only an option at Mercedes or the option that we know he's got on the table, which is the Sauber slash Audi team. Now, at Mercedes, there seems to be a complication that they would like to leave the door open for a Max Verstappen move for 26, should that continue to be a, become a possibility. Which means that if they were going to offer Carlos Sainz a seat, the rumours are that that seat option may only be for one year. Now, does Carlos Sainz want to take a one-year contract? Do the team even want to give a one-year contract to any driver, given that 25 and 26 are almost intrinsically linked to one another and by that what I mean is do you want a driver in your car for 25 and then change them for 26 when you're also changing the engines you're changing the sat is the chassis the biggest set of rule changes this sport has seen possibly ever do you want to throw a new driver into the mix at the same time for most people the answer to that is no you don't most people want to get their drivers sewn up for 2025 and 2026 together in one contract that will cover both of those years. So it becomes complicated to try and mix and match and bring in people for a one year in the potential hope that somebody else might come along the year after. It seems messy. If I was Carlos Sainz, and there was so much more to this I fully appreciate, but if I was Carlos Sainz, I'd be seriously considering this Audi uh, slash Sauber option as a potentially really strong one leading a manufacturer team coming into the sport who want to come in with a bang and do things properly, he could end up leading that team alongside Hulkenberg and could actually end up growing and being, being somebody who could really stand out. So this is a team that are not going to do it by halves. And yeah, they're inexperienced to some extent, but they're going to come in and throw money and personnel. They're putting a lot of preparation into this. They aren't going to do this half-heartedly. That could, I think, be a really strong option for Carlos Sainz. From a Mercedes point of view, the whole Kimi Antonelli story just does not go away. And there are still rumors that Kimi Antonelli could end up being placed at the Williams team. We've seen Mercedes do that uh, time and time again. George Russell followed that route to Mercedes. Valtteri Bottas followed that route to Mercedes. Kimi Antonelli could well do a similar thing, but then they've got that same problem again. Do they do a two year contract at Williams, leaving Mercedes without a second driver, and I'm saying that given that we say George Russell might now be a number one driver when Lewis Hamilton moves away. So many difficult decisions to be made around the driver market because of the regulation changes coming into the sport over the next few years. We'll keep an eye on all of that. Um, from a driver perspective, another thing, let's link ourselves back to Ferrari because that's my next topic. As Lewis Hamilton moves to Ferrari at the end of this year, still undecided as to whether or not he will take his own engineer, Pete Bonington, with him. Um, that would be a blow for Mercedes because not only is he Lewis Hamilton's race engineer, but he's also a key member of that Mercedes team in the wider engineering uh, layout, the landscape there. He's a key member, key personnel, which would be missed if he were to leave. But from a relationship perspective, it's going to be much, much easier for Lewis Hamilton to transition to Ferrari if he's got the familiar face if he's got the relationship that's already been built over years with Bono. If he can take that with him and they can keep that going, there is much greater chance of success straight out the box, I would say. And that brings me on to Ferrari. Let's first of all talk about, as we're talking about engineers, the engineering changes at Ferrari because Charles Leclerc goes into this weekend's Grand Prix with a new race engineer. And for everything that I've just said about Pete Bonington and Lewis Hamilton and how important the relationship between driver and engineer is, they're changing it midway through the season at Ferrari. Now, that is something that's very unusual. It's not unprecedented, but it's unusual. It is, poses a, a serious risk. Uh, what they're doing is they're moving his performance engineer up to become his race engineer, and his race engineer moves away from the race team to go on to, and I think I'm quoting this correctly, other important projects at Ferrari. 
whatever that means. Essentially, the relationship between Charles Leclerc and his race engineer is flawed. We see it and we hear it in the radio messages, Charles Leclerc often questioning the messages coming from his race engineer. There seems to be confusion, it's not clear. And look, those are all the things that you absolutely need between driver and race engineer. Communication and clear, concise communication is key to almost everything. The driver's doing 200 miles an hour plus. He's in heat of battle, going wheel to wheel often at times in very difficult, high pressurized circumstances. The communication and the messages that come from the team need to be delivered in a very clear, concise way that's calm and measured where the driver has total trust that those messages are the correct ones and that he can believe what's being told to him. And he can have total belief that the decisions being made are all for the best. And I think we can all probably agree, and particularly given this latest decision, I think we can understand that maybe that hasn't been happening to the best degree at Ferrari. And so if they want to build Charles Leclerc into something that's even more successful, they are making this change now in the hope that it delivers results. So an interesting one to keep an eye on, but that is something that's going to have to be developed over time, that relationship. It's not like they don't know each other, they absolutely do, but they have to build a race engineer driver relationship too. Also at Ferrari, lots of big technical changes, big updates coming to the car. Now Ferrari are a team that are on the up. They are no doubt heading back towards success. The leadership that Fred Vasseur has shown I think is already paying dividends. You're seeing it in terms of the whole performance of the team. The whole um, environment around that team is changing and I think for the better. They're bringing in Lewis Hamilton, which is a big, bold move, and they're making the kind of changes that will lead to success, whether it's this year, next year, or in the, in the near future, they're heading back in that way, in a similar way to the way McLaren are. From a technical perspective, they've also got major updates coming this time around. Big revisions to the side pod that now look a bit more Red Bull and McLaren-esque, I guess. Uh, front and rear wing changes, little changes to the flick-ups and the vents uh, and the ducts around the halo. So lots of changes, and if they work, might give Ferrari a decent step forward like we saw at McLaren last time out. And at McLaren, of course, we're also getting the full upgrade package coming to Oscar Piastri's car. So both cars now in with a great shot of seeing that performance come to life. So Imola this weekend will be a real interesting test just to see how close the likes of McLaren and Ferrari really are to Red Bull. We saw it in Miami, of course, we saw a change in power dynamics, but was it circuit specific? Were Red Bull just having a bit of an off weekend? We will find out in Imola this weekend. And just speaking of Red Bull quickly, uh, Liam Lawson, those rumors were starting to surface and bubble up again. Liam Lawson potentially to replace Daniel Ricciardo as quickly as Imola. Well, that has been shut down very abruptly by Helmut Marko. And interestingly, he even went as far as to say those rumours were actually planted in the media by Lawson's management, um, which may not come as a huge surprise, these things happen, but it just shows how a what a political game Formula One is as much as it is a sporting game. The same kind of things where stories are planted, rumours are circulated very deliberately to create stories, which then create momentum to try and egg that change along. So that one on hold for now. It's not to say it won't happen. It's just not happening this weekend. And finally, the point system change that we were having discussions around last time out and that was discussed at a recent F1 commission meeting looks set to change. I think all of the teams have agreed and backed the idea of uh, giving points down to 12th position. I ha absolutely agree with that. I think it's a good move. My only thing would be Maybe we should go even further, as I said before, but I think it's a decent move and a step in the right direction. Keep the competition alive further down the grid than just the top 10. I think that's only got to be a good thing. I'd love to know what you think. I'd love to know what you think on that and any of the discussions and any of the topics I've covered today. I would love to know your thoughts on the Seedstream app once you've been and downloaded it from any of your app stores or via the link in this description. As I said, it's totally free and I'm pretty sure you'll love it. And if you don't, you can get rid of it again, can't you? Give it a try. I'd love to know your thoughts. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful week, guys, and I will be back very soon after that Imola Grand Prix to discuss anything that crops up over that weekend. But in the meantime, have a good one. Ta-da.